Hey team, welcome back into the Warrior Holic first session for 2024. Hope you all guys had a really awesome Christmas, New Year's, relaxed, refreshed, ready for a massive year this year. And I thought what better way to kick things off by getting one of the boys in, have a bit of a reflection on 2023, and see if we can get a few insights on how the boys are looking heading into 2024. So great to see you, my man. Great to have you back on the show, Mr. Jazz Tavanga. What's up, brother? How's it going? Not too bad, my man. Looking all refreshed there after a bit of a break over Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a good break. A uh, few beers in the break. Um, <laughs> but it was day one today at preseason, so um, now it's time to go to work. Yeah, but congratulations. I see you and your partner have a little bubbles on the way there. Yeah. Exciting, yeah. exciting times, bro. Yeah, this is our first baby. Um, we had a few infertility problems, um, as a lot of women go through. Um, but so, yeah, we're just blessed and, and lucky um, that we've got this far. Um, we're pretty much in the clear now. So, yeah, not long to go. She's halfway through the third trimester. So, yeah, baby. When did she do? March. March. Oh, awesome, bro. At least it's not October, right? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I know that's stress. We had a few of those issues ourselves, so a pretty tough time. And going through that last year, I guess, and on top of the um, on the injuries and stuff, so it must have been a bit of an up and down year for you last year, bro. Yeah, it was mixed bag. Uh, it was a lot of shit uh, happened in twenty twenty three. I'm I'm glad that year's over. Um, but yeah, look, I, I got a few ambitions a um, few goals to tick off this year and um, I'm fit and healthy right now so um, you know fingers crossed I can get through the year unscathed <clears throat> yeah but I guess it's um, you know when when we sit back from the outside like as fans for me it was probably the most exciting year um, for so many different ways as a fan and I guess as a whole, you know, you guys will kind of be happy. You made progression, frustrated at how it finished and shit. But just starting out on yourself, bro, like, um, you know, when we chatted last time, you are going through the first injury there, but to kind of get a couple there. Um, how did you find that struggle? Because you haven't really had any big injuries before, eh? No, well, I've had an ankle surgery, um, and that's it. that was about it. And um, Until end of 2022 and 23, um, that's when all the shit started fucking, oh, excuse my language. <laughs> That's all right, That's, bro. <laughs> Speak from the heart, man. It was like someone had a voodoo doll fucking stabbing it every bloody week. Um, but yeah, I, I never really experienced you know injury before, and it was it was hard, especially watching um, how well the boys are doing. Um, yeah. When you when you're injured, you you sort of feel isolated, and um, it's hard not to feel isolated because you know you train away from the group, and you know the boys get to travel away and, and they play footy and. You're stuck in rehab with, you know, your rehab coach and your physio. So it is pretty depressing being in in, um, in rehab, and it's hard not to fall into that trap. Um, and yeah, I pretty much spent my whole year in rehab. So, well, I mean, but that said, you know, I was actually a bit bored over the holidays and hanging out for some um, footy. So I watched that first Sharks game. Well, you had a primo game against them. Your numbers were crazy, and like you had that game against the. Um, over there in Queensland and stuff, mm. so I think there's definitely some highlights amongst the tough, the tough stuff there, bro. Yeah, yeah, I felt like I finally, um, you know, matured my game. The start of last year, I was playing some. Or start of last year, I was playing some good footy when I come back from injury, and um, yeah, I felt like I sort of matured my game. I didn't have to try and be someone I wasn't, and um, yeah, I was playing some some good footy, and um, hopefully, I can get get back to there and and improve even more. I thought one of the key indicators for me, bro, was that um, you kind of came straight back into the um, starting lineup there without going to cup. So I think that was a good reflection on what um, we'd be seeing in you. But shit, that must have been hard on the lungs, bro. Yeah, I played. Really I, cardio, actually, bro. I actually played. I actually played one cup game, but I was only oh, allowed. To, I was only allowed to play twenty minutes, um, or twenty five minutes. Yeah, and then the cup boys. It was when the boys played Roosters, um, and the cup boys lost their bench. And I was sitting on the bench, like looking at Webby, like, can I go on? He's going, no. He's like, sit your ass there, you're not going on. And I was like, <laughs> so the boys had to tough out when it was bloody hot, too. Um, and and they, they, the boys ended up holding on for the dub. And yeah. Was that the first one or the second time you come back? That was the first time I came back last year. Um, yeah, I but it's like years. the second time, like basically coming right back before the finals, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right before the finals. But yeah, bro, I wasn't, I wasn't in. Um, 
I wasn't in good shape to play. And I spoke to Jeez. Wibby, but I don't think I was the man for the job because even though I had all that time off and I was, even though I was healthy to play, I wasn't fit to play. Like I hadn't played any footy. I did bugger raw training um, with, the, with the group. So, um, yeah, that I wasn't, I wasn't in a good spot to play um, those finals games. But I guess it's like anything, man. It's like um, Webby in his first year with the, with the club and, you know, all trying to figure out how stuff like that goes because there are probably some guys, I'm sure you, you'll get onto those when we talk about pre-season, the assholes who just turn up, haven't done anything all pre-season and then win like the, the shuttle runs and shit. Yeah. There's always those guys. But some guys, you know, you've got to get those miles under their legs, eh? Mm. Yeah, well, it just shows how much trust um, Webby has in me. So, um, you know, he backs me, he backed me and, um, you know, I really respect that and um, hopefully I can pay him back with playing some good footy this year. Yeah, bro, for sure. Just to quick, before we get on to next season, I'd like to kind of get your thoughts on a couple of aspects about 2023. Um, you know, I know you kind of put the reset button on and start focusing on 2024, but I think... Um, Maybe if we look at it, there's there's a th- maybe three or four key things that stand out to me. One is, you know, having that change and complete change in coaching group, um, getting your thoughts on that, and then sort of how the culture felt within the team, and then that experience of just how the country and almost the world got behind you guys um, yeah. to kind of get what it, you know to feel it from a, a guy in my position where I kind of sit in between. It's been pretty crazy as a year to kick this thing off last year, but. How did you feel like, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it. You maybe, I think we were about a quarter way through the season last time, but what was the biggest sort of difference in the way the coaching went compared to previous years that, that sparked things? Um, yeah, it was a huge difference. I think um, right from the get-go, we were doing a lot of footy stuff, a lot of fundamentals um, instead of, you know, I felt like us as Warriors, we were always running fit, but we weren't footy fit, and we spoke about that. Um, in the review of of uh, the season just gone, that's where we need to get better. Um, you know, we were always uh, running fit, but we went footy fit, and when we get put in high pressure situations, we would obviously we would either cough up the ball, or give a penalty away, or whatever. Um, so right from the get go, we did a lot of footy, and I felt like we were footy fit last year. Um, you you saw look at our game model how we were playing. Shawnee was kicking down the into corners. Our whole kick chase was down there. It used to be you know only a couple guys. There'll be spaces in the middle. Um, even just playing um, simple football, getting down there down there and and keeping them down there. Um, and then obviously the coaches, like you said, um, our coach our group of coaches. I thought they really nailed. Um, their jobs in their areas, like Morgs was our defensive and middles coach, Richie Agar's unbelievable edges coach, and the way our edges attacked and defended, um, you know, just showed in our in the games and how we were winning games. Um, yeah, and, and Webby himself, he just he's got the he's got the balance right. He he knows how to have fun, but when it's time to work, we work, and he 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 makes you feel so confident because he instills belief in you and. Um, yeah, he's just a, a weapon of a coach and he makes you want to play real hard for him. Yeah, it's funny um, because, like, you you see there's, there's generally two kinds of coaches looking from the outside. You've got the ultra-technical guys like, um, what's his name, Seabold and whatever. Um, and then you've got the guys who are the real people managers like you know, Wayne. Um, but it seems like Webby's got them both, like he's you know, tapped into mm. everyone's heart, like he's them, you know, the really good mates from that side of things. So he's got the culture, but he's also from what Chan said, real technical, uh, but mm. does it in a way that it's not overwhelming? Would that be right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's bang on. Like he is, um, he's got sort of, he's got the balance is right of, you know, most aspects. Um, he, like you said, he does, it feels like he cares about you. Um, he does instill belief in you and make you feel confident. But then again, he's very technical. Um, yeah, he's, it's probably the best coach I've had. Yeah. I get that feeling. When I grew up, man, I was a silly prick, man. I did a lot of dumb stuff. Um, and like at school, I was never scared of the strap. Back mm. in my day, we had the strap and the cane and stuff, and I was never scared of getting it. I was yeah. scared of disappointing my mum and the reaction mm. she would have given me. Um, 
and it wasn't she was she never hit me or anything but just I remember one day I got internally suspended at school when she picked me up and she asked me what happened I told her and she just didn't look at me for like about the next two hours and that to me had a much bigger impact than fear yeah is Webby kind of like that Harry you know he he you know sort of emotionally gives you his expectation which kind of makes you want to deliver more rather than being a coach who makes you do it through fear yeah, I think I think so. Well, one thing he says is, "Don't be scared to fail. Don't be, don't have fear of failure." Um, he said, "Whatever it is, as long as you attack it, um, we'll back you all the way." And that's just like, for example, um, like our wingers when they have to catch high balls, he's like, "Go and attack the ball. Don't be scared of dropping it. If you drop it, we're gonna defend it anyway." Um, that's just one example, and that's how he sort of makes you feel across the board. It's like, yeah, don't be scared to fail. Man, that's awesome. I guess mm. like when you, you look at the – before I get on to how it kind of felt being part of that culture within the team because it seemed there's a lot of camaraderie in that there. But from an outside, for me, when you talked about the footy fitness and stuff, I guess two real areas stuck with me as a fan compared to any era I can remember in the Warriors, um, particularly in probably the last 10 years, is the first practice – or the trial game against the Tigers, you guys just – played like you could have played two games, you were fit there. And that continued on through the season that so often the Warriors would be fitter and finish stronger than their opposition. And that was even some of the games we didn't quite get over the line against like the Roosters and the, the um, Melbourne when we got killed with injuries and stuff, but we're still in it. And the other one was a defence, particularly the tri-line defence. Mm. I never thought that you guys were just going to give it away. Whereas in the yep. past, you'd just be, oh, fuck, just waiting for that, that yeah, hole to open yeah. up. But they never mm. really did. Are they two areas you felt like a big difference being part of that? 100%. And like I said, we are always running fit, but we went footy fit. And then when we become, all we did was fundamentals, footy, footy, footy. So when it did come to those high-pressure situations, we fought back to the our habits and we changed our, our old habits to good habits and if that's when when you are under pressure, you fall back to your like I said your your habits, your fundamentals, and the amount of reps that the boys had did when it got to that stage, they they were reliable. You could trust them, and they could do the job because they had done all the reps, they had done the work. Um, but defense, that was yeah, we did work on it, but part of it was you know the care for the jersey and you know like you said the camaraderie. I think the boys, the group that we had, you know there was no dickheads in our crew and. I think everyone really generally cares about each other, and you know, if you got a brother, you know, you're not gonna try. You're gonna try your best not to let him down. You're gonna work that much harder, um, as opposed to if you got a dickhead in the team, you won't really give, you know, two shits about yeah. what happens to him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, there's a couple of things in there that plays in that, and um, I think we we had it pretty solid last year. Because um, I've always scared. yeah, you you think like no one goes out there to intentionally miss tackles or whatever. And if you're getting into an NRL team 99% of the time, you're a good player and you fucking know how to tackle and stuff like that. Mm. But if your heart's not in it, like we talked about during that, um, particularly the last year of COVID when a bunch of guys had made it known they didn't want to come or whatever, you could just see mm. the look in each other's eyes or the look across at someone thinking, fuck, man, what are you even doing? Whereas this year, if we switch to the culture, um, Looking at the Panthers, for example, when they first started their run, you'd see those massive try celebrations or the massive high fives or pats on the back when they saved the try. Mm. And people started to give them shit for being cocky. But from the outside, it just, to me, looked like guys who'd worked so hard and they were delivering on what they'd tried to do. And they're just excited to be part of that with their mates. And none of it would, feels like a show for the crowd. It just seems like you guys are like, yeah, bro, we got that. Is that mm. how it's starting to feel with you guys? Yeah, I think celebrating good moments in, in games, it creates energy. And, you know, you can be stuffed and then some someone forces the error. The energy that you get off that, um, yeah, like I said, builds energy and the other team can feel that too. Um, if you look at the Rabbitohs game, uh, when the boys played at home and they lost, you saw every little moment that the Rabbitohs won, whether it was an error or penalty, they carried on like the kids, like they all bloody celebrating like they won the grand final and you you just saw it started deflating the boys and um if you look at the team who the Rabbitohs had on paper and you look at our team you're thinking no way this is like a cup team 
playing against the Warriors and somehow they just managed to, you know, get the win that night. And I believe it was because of, you know, something as simple as that. Yeah. Um, just energy and, um, yeah, celebrating those good moments. It's, it's plays a big part. You saw that in that turnaround again in the away game against the Sharks, but half time there, you know, the, mm. the heads are sort of a little bit down, but even when they were getting like try after try, you could see that, like, I'm going to get you guys back. And then, you know, after that little halftime chat and you guys came out, it was literally feeding off that energy. And you saw it like with Ed, bro, when he's getting wound up against Molotalo, giving him a bit of a push mm. to celebrate. Um, I think it was when Adam scored in that corner there. And, and you could just see it feed off them. And I think the, the, the biggest example how that culminated was against the Knights in that, um, that final Mm. And it wasn't just you guys, it was the crowd, bro. Yeah. Every time they'd mess up and I can't remember what that that song was like, you know, see you later, something or other, and like the whole crowd singing you guys are done, go. And how yeah. they walk back from heart to halfway and try and come back when you got, you know, thirty thousand people telling you you're <laughs> done, not just the <laughs> team, bro. That was so such an awesome way to cap it off from a home experience. What what was mm. that game like for you, bro? Well that game was something else I was so buzzy to just be a part of it and you know I remember finishing the game when I was I'd finished my stint and Shawnee had done his stint he was he, he walked off the left side of the field and he had to walk up do a big loop around and just to see the roar of the crowd how happy they were I was just so um what is it I was pretty proud of of um you know what the boys had, had achieved this year of the year and um, it was just so good to see because you know our fans deserve it the most um, and then oh. I remember that when the game finished I just looked at Robbo and when Robbo first come into the club he was making all these you know big changes and not everyone agreed with him and to look at where we were when he first come on board to where we were now I was just like bro that's the hard work that you know you've done you and your team have done you know, all those calls there when people thought, you know, you're, you know, crazy doing what you've done. The decisions that he had made, um, I just saw that, you know, how happy he was. And I was like, I told him, I was like, bro, this is all the hard work that you've done. And, you know, to where we are now, we're a top four team. Last year, we were 15th. Now we're a top four team. Um, and and I, I know our team's going to be in the top four, top four team for, for a long time. And, um, yeah, it's only a matter of time till we get that ring, I reckon. I mean, that you, I mean you, you're one of the longest serving players now, I guess you and Bunty, um, mm. that you would have seen all the different ups and downs as you went. And um, that's one of the reasons I kind of started this, Warrior Holic, is like that during COVID, when there's like, we won't get into what they were, but there were a few things that went on and like Robbo ended up making some decisions and people mm. were, you know, Bad mouthing him and um, Cam George and stuff, and I thought, you know, we're never going to know as fans the full picture, and we shouldn't know. And that's what I love about the Warriors doesn't really leak. Like RTS, you know, the first time he signed, the second time, no one knew until yeah. the day it was announced, bro. Whereas you get these other clubs, it's you know everyone's talking about it. So to to see like a guy who's put as much money and commitment, you know, risking his family's livelihood into the club mm. that we love. Mm. And yep. seeing how he can sit back and smile about it now, but he's empowered Webby and Cam George and Cappy and that to do it. I'm mm. you know, forever grateful that he sort of looked after you guys during COVID. But just to quickly jump back to that um, Knights game, bro, I didn't know what was going on because I was in the uh, east stand on the south end and the crowd was yeah. going nuts. And I thought there's yeah. a streaker or something. And it wasn't <laughs> until Sean got around the trial line, like, oh, bro, and like, that moment, and also, I don't know if you saw it, but when Dallin scored that try in the right corner and he stood under the post and just goes like this, waving yeah. his hands to the south stand, and the crowd just went nuts. But I'll never forget being part of that and just the whole whole chanting the whole way through a game, bro. I'm determined to make sure that happens again this year. So hit yeah. it up for round one, bro. <laughs> well, 100%, bro. And I think just the way the, the country got behind us, um, it was, you know, something I never experienced before. You know, I'd be walking the street and then guys would be going like, up the wires and I'd be like, oh, what's up, bro? <laughs> but in the past, bro, when we've lost real bad, I'll go into the supermarket and someone would be like, he's a fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, bro. 
But so it was, yeah. it was cool for New Zealand to, you know, get behind a team, you know, because we are, you know, the only team in New Zealand. And it felt like, you know, we were the bloody Kiwis or something. Um, Even more than, I mean, all I can say, bro, is my, my kids were born and raised in Japan. And I think my daughter was about five when she came here. And my son was about nine. And they never really got into footy. Like, I followed mm. the Warriors over in Japan and watched them and stuff. But even being here, they've never really been interested. But my daughter, who was like 10 last season, she started coming home and every second word was up the wires. She'd be mm -hmm. looking at the games with me. And by the end of the season, like, her and her mates remembered all of the players' names and everything. And she went from no interest in sport, any kind yeah. of sport, to being fired up about the wires and like this, she's, she's going, I'm going to be the junior warrior holic. I'm going to have my channel and I'm going to say, <laughs> Kia ora whanau, today's game we've got. It. <laughs> so touching the hearts of those young fellas and young yeah, faces, right. bro, that must be pretty awesome when you see that. Yeah, 100%, because you know this country has been, you know, pretty, pre predominantly rugby um, country and it felt like, um, you know, we sort of, oh, it felt like we, we you know, Past the All Blacks, like it was a World Cup year last year, and no one was really going on about the All Blacks no, until right. after our season. Um, and you know, I've nothing against the All Blacks, but just the the craze from the fans, how what crazy they were going was, yeah, something that you know I hope we get to experience again this year. I mean, you think like they had? I mean, it's tough because I, I grew up playing rugby. I always loved rugby, but I don't. Uh, the rules of rugby have kind of destroyed the game for me, and I find it really hard to watch. Mm. Just, you know, the, whatever. But I still enjoy the All Blacks. Yeah. But they were lucky it was a World Cup year, bro, because that kind yeah. of had them had an opportunity for them to kind of get out there in the media again and get a bit of interest. But unless they have a crazy year this year, and if you yeah. guys continue on like I think you're going to, you can just see, like, what was it? They had like 2,500 guys apply for the open trial. Like when you did That's it, crazy. how many guys turned up to that? Going back, a couple hundred. <laughs> so that's a massive there sign. Kids, there was even kids flying from Australia and it coming over as a child. Like that's how crazy they were coming to get behind us. And it's amazing. One year mm. we've gone from having to pay overs and you know trying all sorts of tricks to get people to mm. come and to hold on to them. To then we've built an environment where people will want to come and hopefully take unders to play for us. So. I'm just stoked go for guys like you and Bunty and RTS and the other long serving players. You know, you've had us hardcore fans have always stuck there, but you know, you've you've had that people calling you assholes or whatever in the street mm. or the bullshit on social media to now not have to go away to experience that success, to experience that in your own backyard. Um and I know you guys like it pisses me off like we're gonna use this as a segue into twenty twenty four when I see online these wankers comparing you guys to Queen, North Queensland and how they kind mm. of fell off a bit last year after that big year with absolutely no rationale behind it. And for mm. me, they had a bunch of young guys who made NRL debuts but then went straight into Origin, then played a World Cup. who were, Their bodies would have been shattered, so they come mm. back fatigued already. You've got a completely different style of coach in Todd Payton. I mean, you've mm. experienced both, but I look at what Webby built last year that nothing was a fluke. It's yeah. built on fundamentals, culture, competitiveness, no dickheads. Then you add Chanel, RTS, and Capewell to that. How do you drop off? Yeah. <laughs> it's 100%. not even the same thing, bro. Mm. Um, on that, switching into 2024, how, how have you found the preseason so far? Is it the same as last year or kind of leveled it up a bit different with the way you've approached it? No, well, after the 2023 season, uh, the review, um, we just said that we need to be better in all areas. And um, one of the main areas was we need to be fitter. Um, you know, we look at the Broncos and the Pen Penrith um, grand final. You know, realistically, I don't think we would have went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them like the Broncos did um, in that final. So it's about improving, getting them better in areas that we're already good at and then getting better in areas that we obviously need to work on. And the preseason has been really enjoyable for me. Um, I've sort of, the, the rehab team and the strength and conditioning team have sort of not eased me in, but um, just sort of monitored me and um, pulled me in and out of uh, drills or games that um, I need to pull out of. And um, I've built myself up nicely, and now I'm back with the team, full, fully back with the team. And 
I've not got no injuries or anything. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's been a lot of touch wood, bro. Of, yeah, touch, touch wood. wood, bro. For 100. <laughs> um, been a lot of wrestling, a lot of wrestling, um, a lot of running too, as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, um, today was a was our first okay. day back, and um, it was more skill more skill based today. Did some wrestle with Kai, some gym, but tomorrow's our hard day. So yeah, not looking forward to that. It's interesting you mentioned like the the Panthers and the Broncos, and I honestly felt like you guys were better than anyone else in the comp. And you had the ability, I think, to beat both the Panthers and the Broncos. But I felt like the, it's hard to describe the, the particularly the speed and momentum they were able to get through their forwards, yeah. like to mm. hit the tackle, get a bit of momentum on the ground and get the ball up and back into the half uh, the dummy half's hands before the defence is set. From the outside kind of seemed like something they, was, they were a little bit ahead of you on. Is that something you kind of felt on the field against them? Yeah, 100%. Look, I think looking back on the game, like I've watched it a couple of times and it just pisses me off because that team that the team that played that night, it didn't look like us the whole season. And um, just the way we were moving, the way we were defending, like we were getting two, three-man tackles in, you know, all year. And then all of a sudden... Broncos' game plan was just to isolate one person. As soon as they bumped them, they throw an offload out the ass. And I don't know how many offloads they threw that night, but that was like the license they got given. That's what it felt like their game plan was. And we just didn't adapt and we couldn't stop them. And, um, yeah, the score just got too far ahead. And then once that forward pass happened with Reese, like I'm not going to say we would have won if that didn't happen, but that sort of deflated because we were right there with them. I think it was 24-12, I think, the score was. And that was at halfway. You know, we get that ball back. I don't know what happens. We might score, we might not. But I think it could be a different, you know, result. Um, I'm not blaming that, though. They were beating us all over the park with a lot of things. Um, but, yeah, that was certainly the, the nail in the coffin after that. In, in the past, though, bro, like, um, I, it would have deflated me in the fact that, shit, we missed our one opportunity. But if mm. you look at both the Panthers and the Broncos, is that I mean Broncos? What are they about year four or year five? Um, in their kind of rebuild under um, Walters and about year six for the Panthers, you learn about the emotion of the event and stuff like that. That's different and so forth. So you've experienced that. You level up. You know how to go back and reflect on something. You don't know what what you don't know, bro. With not having played finals for ages. But like I said, I. I genuinely believe it wasn't a fluke last year, so you can build on that. Whereas in the past, it would have been, oh, fuck, that's us gone now <laughs> for the next five oh, years. So that pain, bro, you'll be able to look back on that at certain times during next season, and it'll just, it'll make that, those burning lungs just a little bit easier to push, right? Yeah, 100%. And like, like we said, it wasn't a fluke because it was built off hard work. And to think where we were, where we started from last year, we started down here with, t- you know, 15th position on the ladder to going up to here to a top four team. We start here. We don't have to start all the way back down. We don't have to learn all the shit we learned last year. We just have to get better at, at, at them. And I think it's, you know, adding the guys who we added in, you know, Roger, Coop, Capewell, Chanel, um, adding them into the mix, you know, we can only get better. And I think, like, our real shot is going to be this year. Um, you know, with ads leaving, I don't know what's happening with Sean yet, but I think to win it, like our real shot is this year, and we have to, we have to fucking do it. Like there's no yeah, other bro. choice. Yeah. So just to to kind of wrap things up, um, you know, when we spoke last time, we talked about the <clears throat> preseason for 2023, and you mentioned um, SJ was a bit of a like a you know an influencer there, how he came back with a chip on his shoulder, and just work harder than he's ever done before, maybe. Um, you know, sort of set the tone a little bit. Anyone standing out this year who's coming in and, and showing the way a little, or is everyone sort of fighting mm-hmm. to be that guy? Bro, there's there's been a lot of young fellas that are, have been very surprising. Um, not surprising, but they've just... You can tell that they're going to have good years. Um, I'm looking... The young fellas I'm talking about are Zion, um, Ali, um even Dimitri, I know he's in rehab, come from ACL, but 
where he's working hard, working his ass off. Um, and then from the older boys, who I think has, has had a good precedent, I mean, Sean, I think him coming back last year that and him setting the tone, like, that's just engraved in him now. Like, that's the only way he's been training, and which is good. But I think Roger, um, there's no surprises there. Roger is a freak or an athlete. But um, the preseason that he's having, it's it's like he's never left. He hasn't skipped a beat, and yeah, he's just uh, he's very athletic, I'll say. Um, and he's it's, he's he's had a he's had a huge preseason already, and uh, yeah, it's scary to think, you know, in a month's time. But today we said we had twenty five sessions till the first trial, um, which is what four or five weeks away, and you know, another four or five weeks of hard work. It's scary to see where where we're gonna be. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned those young fellas like I've done a wise I've I've always been a fan of Zion since I saw him you know, playing for um did he play SG Bill first at first or straight in the cup? I can't remember, but just seeing his athleticism and his, his energy and still being so young and able to mm. compete with those big guys. Um and I thought um Dimitri, he when he first played that game against the Panthers it's just something in his eyes looked like he was felt like he wasn't he was amongst stars. It was a little yeah. bit overwhelmed. And unfortunately he got a bit of an injury. But when I saw him go back into Cup and watch them after that, he looked like a man amongst boys. He just mm. he looked like he'd gone up that level. And I really saw like because I remember after the Tigers game, I think it was um Jacob Laban and Zion. Every all the fans go, oh, they're awesome. And one yeah. of the um guys that interviewed Webby said about them, he goes, Yeah, they're okay, but um, Sifakula was outstanding yeah. I didn't even really notice him that much He'd obviously yeah. seen it right on from that Tigers game But seeing him after he um, went back into Cup You can see he's got something about him, that boy Yeah, 100% And um, <clears throat> yeah, It's just crazy how these guys are so young And um, I'm like, what the hell are your parents bloody feeding you? <laughs> yeah, bro <laughs> When they poison. say like, they're like 20, 21 I'm going, when I was 20, 21 I was bloody scorny little I couldn't do what they do, um, but yeah, like you said, man, they've got they got something in them, and you can tell they're going to be special players. Uh, Ali's a similar, you know. Who knows what would have happened if he didn't do his hammy or whatever? But that kind of leads me to one question, I guess. Is I did I don't you probably would have seen it, but I did a review of the, the depth by position, um, just as a way to fill a gap before Christmas there, mm-hmm. and it's amazing how much depth there is, and particularly so. You look, we went from everyone complaining, even me, what thinking centres was a lack of, you know, one of our weaknesses to now, you know, you've got four genuine, well, you know, top class guys, potentially, and Ali, um, Rocco and Adam, plus RTS, so you've got a real quality centre. Then you've got the halves there with SJ, um, who have we got there, Tamari Martin, we've got Luke, we've got um, Chanel and Ben Farr, he's really surprised me over um, this year he he was outstanding. So the depth in every position is how Webby gets people to be patient, and mm. we don't lose these young fellows who get impatient and get big offers to go overseas. Is a is what I'm really curious to see. Yeah, hard out and bro, like you said, the depth is good is only a good thing because it creates competition and it makes you work harder. Um, you know, you got someone on your tail, makes only makes you get better as a player. So. Um, that's something we've sort of lacked in the, the past, um, and it, it's a good thing to have. It's a good headache. Do, do you feel like the, the boys, you and there are going to be some guys who started in those final games and might end up in Cup to start the season next year, and how you, you know, how you keep those guys motivated to, you know, to not feel like it's a, how you get them to not, or to use it as a source of motivation rather mm. than dropping their lip? Because that that'll be a you know injury is one thing you can't control, but if you went from being a you know starting or bench player to cup, that must be a pretty tough thing to handle, you know. Yeah, well, you know, there's a reason for it. You're obviously lacking in some area, um, and it's it's up to you to go back and you know assess your game, get what the coach wants from you, and go work on it. Um, it's always hard getting dropped. You know, I've been dropped heaps of times in my career, and. Um, you know, you just got to go back to the drawing board and, and work hard and get better in the areas that they need. The team needs you to get better at. Awesome. But I mean, as fans have got to level up too. But I just want to finish up by quickly touching on, um, you mentioned a bit about RTS there. Um, just quickly on like Chanel coming back. You know, he, mm-hmm. from the outside, he seems like a different man. And 
people criticize what he did, but I'm a massive believer in you, some people need to do that. When you you don't yep. know anything else, you step away and because it's life, bro. It's not footy. Mm. He's got a life to live, and for him to go and find himself and stuff, and come back. For me, as a, a leader of a business, I would know he's back for the right reasons. Then, but ha- yep. has he come back a different boy or man? Yeah. I should say. Yeah, he's come back a different man. Definitely, I think him. It was only it was his decision at the end of the day, and his his family are in a you know comfortable position where they don't rely on you know his income. Where some other boys are different, you know they he doesn't they don't have that choice because of you know their family relies on them. Um, and he was very content in it. I, th- I feel like the love for the game was lost after that last year in Redcliffe. And, you know, he needed to get away to reassess life, like you say. And, um, you know, I think it's just lit that fire again in his belly and he's come back a different man. But at the same time, it feels like he's never left. Um, he hasn't skipped a beat. He is a bloody athlete, as you can see in the photos, the beach photos. When they put up that bro. beach photo of his rig, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> bro, but that was you last year. I remember that one when you were in, in another one with SJ. Nah, I don't know. Yeah. It was yours photoshopped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It probably was, bro. I don't have abs like that. Um, How's he yeah, size wise? Are you guys a similar like height and weight? Nah, bro. He's like I think he's six foot. I think he's taller than me. He's tall. I thought you're like six four, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five ten, but I say five eleven. Might as well round that up to six foot. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Without um, the hair, but, though, it's a bit tough. Put the half. Oh yeah, I know, on. I know, no, hundred percent. What about K- Capewell, bro? It's like a random having a Queenslander, having had one since bloody Jacob Lilliman, I think. Mm. Um, an yeah, older I guy think... kind of coming in there. Yeah, well, he's obviously got a good relationship with Webby. Um, he's a winner, obviously. Uh, comes from Penrith, won one at the Sharks, um, Queensland, like you say, um, and yeah, he brings a lot of experience. Um, he's a very hard worker. Um, yeah, he's only going to be, he's going to fit into our team really well. Um, I don't know what the rotation is going to be, who's going to be the other back row, who's going to move into bench prop, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, having someone like him, his caliber is, um, yeah, a very good signing. Who's he kind of, you know, I guess one thing I really noticed, like when I go to the games is seeing the camaraderie across the whole team. It wasn't little Mm. groups. By themselves, but I guess like within the team, these little guys who similar personalities and maybe hang out more. Who's he kind of connected with? Um, I think everyone so far. I think um, obviously you feel you think when he comes in, he's gonna you know lean towards the Aussies because he's Australian, and I feel like he'll feel he'd feel more comfortable with them. But he's dove straight in. Um, he didn't do too much pre Christmas. Um, he came in for like the last week because he was busy with obviously his contract and, and moving moving stuff over. Um, but he was back today, day one, and um, yeah, he's jumped straight into it. Um, awesome, bro. Mm. And I guess it, it's, you know, I know you, you um, and like some of the other boys forged a real strong relationship with AFB. So it's another one where... I get annoyed you now when people talk about NRL with these contracts and personal reasons and shit that it's no different than any other fucking job, bro. Like we all get to a point in our job for one reason or another, we need to move on and we've all got contracts, but so I don't judge them for it all. Um, mm. And one thing I'd like to get your opinion on, cause I'm looking at them from the outside and the things you got, particularly you talked about is there's no way I can imagine him playing anything under 100% in anything he does, much less in NRL, just because he's leaving next year. Yeah. I mean, he, his first day back again today, but I bet he was hitting it harder than he ever has, even though he's gone the year after this, you know? Yeah, well, what people don't know is um, the reason why he's going home, and um, I'm not going to say too much details because um, that's not my business, but his mum had a health scare, a very serious one. And he feels like he has to go home and, and be with her in case something you know something does go wrong. Um, credit to him, family comes first. This is only a game, and I know fans are going to be upset with that. But if they were in his shoes, they'll probably do the same thing. Um, he he has been working hard. He's come back fit. Um, he came in earlier than people realise. He came in before Christmas. He wasn't due back till today. Um, he came in earlier, um, and it just shows you know how committed he is to the team. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He feels like 
Um, he is the country and the team one, and that's why he's going to give it, you know, everything he's got this year. Um, especially after the season he's had last year, um, I can only see him, you know, getting better. Yeah, but I mean, I, all I can say is, man, my my dad had um, heart issues for a little while there, and I left my whole life in Japan to come back here. At the end of the day, I was only a, a ten hour flight away from him, but it was the the fact that we were living a few hundred metres down the road and my kids got to spend that quality time with my dad mm. before he passed away. You can't get that back, bro, and it's not about exactly. money. So it's just, you know, I, I, oh, it's one of my missions in this warrior-holic thing, bro, is to stop looking at you guys as if you're not human and because you get paid a bit more than other people that you're not human. Um, yeah. So, yeah, or just let him know, bro, that plenty of fans like me, you know, back what he did. Um, mm. And just excited to see what he delivers this year because, like I said, there's no way he's going to go out half fast. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to have tickets to uh, the first weekend in October again and use them yeah, this year. Yeah, 100%. 100%. All right, bro. Thank you so much for your time. Um, like I said, first day back at training after Christmas. I know you're pretty, pretty tired and you've got the bubs and that, but I'm sure the people who listen or watching will appreciate your time and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank um, you, stay fit, stay healthy. Be in that starting 17 against the Sharks when they head up there, bro. 100, bro. Thank you. I'll have to catch up with you probably midway through the season or something. Yeah, bro. Um, get inside on how things are going, and, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Awesome, bro. Thanks so much, and, uh, yeah, up the mighty wires in 2024. Up the wires, brother. Let's go.